the first question is, just like I have a wife, do I want to be married? Question number one. So, in Nigeria, do we want to be one? It's an assumption that we want to be. It's a, it's a terribly big and wrong assumption. Because when I went to Croatia, Croatia was part of the six countries that formed Yugoslavia. Right now, they're doing very well. Macedonia is doing very well. Slovenia is doing very well. Slovakia is doing very well. So nothing says that we must be one country. Nothing. It's not, it's not sacrosanct that we must be one country. If in being one country, you have all the killings you have. In Jos, in Abuja, everywhere. What's the point being one country? This man has a message that every Nigerian is supposed to listen to. In case you don't know him, his name is Ondi Sagbakoba. He's a very good friend to Bondamet Tinumbu. And this man is speaking the truth about the condition and situation of Nigeria. If you really want to understand this message well, you have to remove tribalism, remove religion and sentiments from your heart. And you will get the deep message that this man has been passing right from the time. Governance is about a foundation. A country that has been struggling with a foundation for 23 years cannot be a serious country. And there has to be a need for some speed. So the Tenth Assembly must immediately address this problem of continuous talking about Nigeria. Remember what Bolaige said about the survival of Nigeria. And it rings, because I was there that day, it still, it still rings in my head that in a situation of a political arrangement such as Nigeria's, the first question is, just like I have a wife, do I want to be married? Question number one. So in Nigeria, do we want to be one? It's an assumption that we want to be. It's a, it's a terribly big and wrong assumption. Because when I went to Croatia, Croatia was part of the six countries that formed Yugoslavia. Right now, they're doing very well. Macedonia is doing very well. Slovenia is doing very well. Slovakia is doing very well. So nothing says that we must be one country. Nothing. It's not, it's not sacrosanct that we must be one country. If in being one country, you have all the killings you have. In Jos, in Abuja, everywhere. What's the point being one country? So that's why in looking at President Tinubu's governance program, I would remind him of a structural engineer who says, I can't build this house, I can't build Nigeria on the basis of a weak governance structure. It is the most important and fundamental process if you want a country to grow. So Nigeria's governance structure is very weak. The first is any nation not at peace and I always like to use the analogy of marriage. If, for instance, every day you get up and you, you and your wife are fighting, you cannot have peace. And you cannot think about how to develop. So the first thing we have to do in Nigeria is we have to organize peace. Because if we don't organize peace and security, you can't have good governance. So that is the step number one. And I also made the point at the lecture that to continue Continue to do the same thing with the same result is a mistake. We cannot resolve our problem by military solution. It will not happen. Quote me. If we continue on this path to uh, deploy the military, deploy resources, I, mean, I don't even know how much has been spent by the military in uh, acquiring armaments, we can't win. And the simple reason is you don't use military sol solutions for what is called irregular warfare. Where do you find these Boko Haram people or the bandits? So military option will not give Nigeria peace. Rather, what you need is to go back and say, before 1914, who were the owners of Nigeria? When you invite those who were owners of Nigeria, Bini Kingdom. Bini Kingdom, in the Guinness Book of Records, has the largest man-made structure in the world. The wall they built is bigger than the Chinese uh, wall. People don't know this. So that is an extremely old empire. And the man who sits on that throne, the Oba, controls a humongous amount of political power. Then you count the MS, you count my own OB, 
yet you exclude them from the process of development is a huge error. It's a huge error. So this is what we need to do. We need to bring in all these guys. We need to bring in Ohaneze, Pandef, Arewa, um, Afenifere. These are the people that will shape Nigeria and give us political peace for development. So that's the first point on governance, on political governance. Then the second point on governance concerns the issue of uh, what is the proper constitution that we need to have because all the constitutions we've had have been imposed right from the uh, colonial to the military to the one that uh, General Absalom imposed and then the one the National Assembly is now conducting you know and it has taken them 23 years I think that's a very long time for us to have a constitution that no one even believes and respects. So I looked up, I did some research, and I, and I, I found Professor, late Professor Mwebeze's um, um, theory on a new constitution very interesting. He says that the National Assembly may not be, and I repeated it to President Babio, may not be aware of the nature of their powers. So I pointed out that the National Assembly has three legislative powers. The first is the National Assembly sitting as the House of Assembly of the Federal Government. The second is the National Assembly sitting as the House of Assembly of the FCT. Then the third is the National Assembly sitting as the House, uh, as the House of Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is a power they've never used. So Mwabeze suggests that they could use that to just establish a new constitution. All they need to do is to consult people. The constitution people don't understand is not as sacrosanct as it sounds because it's, a, it's an act that attaches the, the schedule. So what does it suggest? Just delete the schedule, that's the current constitution, and add a new one. So all these discussions that have been taking place, create, write up something that is agreeable, send it around Nigeria, and once it's accepted, you go to the National Assembly, invoke the powers of Section 4, Subsection 1, and then exchange. This happened when the Republican Constitution was established. The Parliament removed, by deletion, the Independence Constitution, and they put the uh, Republican Constitution in exactly one day. Our National Assembly has spent 23, 23, uh, 23 years. Because if you don't have the foundation, you can't go anywhere. So we don't have security. Our political foundation is weak. Our constitutional foundation is weak. Two vital instruments for development. The judiciary, is, as in my 45 years, never been as low as this. Even the Supreme Court, John Okoro, castigated the appeal court for a terrible judgment where they removed virtually everybody in the uh, plateau uh, political system. So we can't grow if we have a weak judiciary. And therefore, the only way to go is to break up this mafia in the Supreme Court. But to break it up is like saying, you know what? All women, no woman in Nigeria shall be entitled to political office. That's what they've done to us in the judiciary. No lawyer is entitled. It's only them. They create a mafia, block us out, and appoint themselves. Incestuous relationship. So they can't be their best. So I recommended to the National Assembly to, un to understand the difference between administration of justice. That's why judges take note and write versus judicial administration. In respect of judicial administration, the National Assembly can intervene. I, I could see uh, President Babio looking a bit puzzled when I was making that point. I said, are you sure we can do this? Of course, because already there are laws. There's the Federal High Court Act, which sets out how judges should come to the court, how they should be composed. The only thing the Constitution says is you must be 15 years to be a Supreme Court judge, nothing else. So we need a law, a Supreme Court Appointment Act or whatever, to regulate the appointment of and the composition of the courts. In the case of uh, some of the courts, they, it specifies that the person learned in Sharia law and customary law must be part of it. So why should somebody who is 
from the bar not be considered in the composition. To keep excluding the bar and the academics will result in a weak um, uh, uh, judicature. He's got off to a good start. He's kicked the engine of his aircraft. He's gone on to the wrong way. And the most difficult time for a pilot is when you're climbing out. So he's on the climb out. But remember that a, a, a pilot can always radio air traffic control, that he wants to make an air return. So we're at a point where we cannot say the climb out will reach cruising height. We can, an air return is, is a possibility. Unless all what I'm saying, you know, you may say, well, you might have been talking, but what I'm saying, as far as I'm concerned, is a very vital component of how Nigeria can reach cruising height. Otherwise, the captain may be looking for the nearest airport to, to, to return to and land. Well, what you must know is that Namdi Karun is being held hostage on behalf of the famed unity of Nigeria. That's what it's all about. It's as simple as that. If you mention his name in certain circles, they don't want to hear it because they feel like he threatens the real estate called Nigeria. And his Igbo makes it worse because Nigeria's DNA hates the Igbo for attempting, you know, in the 60s and, you know, towards the end of the 70s, to leave a country they said is no longer favorable to their existence. But I keep saying, and I will repeat here again, is there any Nigerian out there in their majority who has not mentally seceded from Nigeria? Not many. That's why people are living in droves. Each time you get on a plane leaving this country is full, each time it's coming back, probably full too, but it is those who are coming back to pack their things that are coming back. That's the way I describe mm. it. But the truth is that Unamdi Kanu has been held hostage. He was abducted from Kenya, extraordinary rendition. The fact that he's, in his, he's kidnapped from Kenya could not be explained shows that any judicial pronouncement or processes after that is null and void. You cannot go and kidnap somebody and bring them before a court. And the courts have made it very clear, even up to the Supreme Court, that he did not jump bail. There was a military that went to his house to kill people, and then he escaped. And now you have brought him back, you ought to respect and restore his bail. That's what I told his lawyers. Why are you applying for bail again? Because the Supreme Court made all the pronouncements except releasing him. And I think mm. it was because they were afraid. And that's why I said he's his hostage to this country. And like you rightly said, the other people have made even more egregious pronouncements and fought and carried arms in this country. And you have not treated them the same way because they're not Namde Khan who's, uh, you know, their name don't sound East. And I'm not here to fetish being able. But the reality is that they are not treated fairly, and Namdi Kano is part of the reason why that is clear to everybody. Right. And by the way, I must also reveal here that there are some Igbo elites who are behind this. You know, whenever there's a crime of conspiracy against freedom fighters, there are people inside and outside who are working together.